uh, as I said this morning, I kind of just want to fill you in a little bit on uh, my trip to India. As most of you know, um, I am shared with Grace Church uh, with the EC denomination. So I serve uh, as the director of global ministries with the EC denomination, which means that I go to different parts of the world where we have EC churches. And so when I'm in India, I'm representing us, EC Church USA, but uh, also representing the other international churches we have in Japan, in Nepal, in Liberia, in Mexico. And so part of my role is going to those places and continuing to form uh, friendship, continuing to think about strategy and how we can best partner with them and what they're doing in that particular country. And in a large way, for me, is to go and be an encouragement. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's special for people to physically be present. We all got to experience what life is like when we couldn't do that with COVID, and we had to meet via Zoom, and had to meet via FaceTime or whatever, and it's just not the same. We all know that. Well, it's same. The true, it's it's same, and it is true of international partnerships as well. Nothing can replace physically being with them in India, sitting down, having meals together, laughing together, sharing uh, with one another, praying for each other, worshiping together. Uh, and so it was a long two years of COVID and not being able to do that. And I'm thankful and grateful that I could travel again, and thankful for Grace Church and your willingness to uh, share me with our denomination and let me do these kinds of things of uh, going to different parts of the world uh, to really, as I said, bring encouragement uh, to our brothers and sisters. So really, that's what I tried to do uh, in India. Uh, the majority of that trip uh, was for the bishop and myself to share in worship services, chapel services, church services, missions uh, services, uh, small gatherings of leaders with the school, uh, the College of Theology, or with the, the leaders that had gathered there. That was our whole purpose, really, uh, of being there. And one of the things I always try and do when I go different places, and I do here all the time, you hear me use the word mission and being missional. And I try and remind us that that has always been God's heart. It didn't just start when Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world, into Jerusalem, uh, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the, the earth, and preach the gospel. It, Jesus kind of recommissioned them. God had already started that mission back in Genesis, as I mentioned, with Abraham, and said, through you, Abraham, all peoples, all nation groups on this planet are going to be blessed, because one day he's going to come, invade human history, and we just celebrated the victory that Jesus had over sin and Satan and death itself. That is for all people. That started with Abraham. And God is still on that mission. And what I often turn back to is Psalm 67, because Psalm 67 talks about that mission that God is on. And within the book of Psalms, as we talked about in our class this morning, if you're a part of that, we get to read about and hear really the heart of God. And Psalm 67 in my Bible, I've written in my Bible, missions. Because to me, it is a reminder of what God is in the process of doing. God is a missional God. He is on a mission. And Psalm 67 conveys that mission all the way in the Old Testament. It didn't just start when Jesus commissioned his disciples. God started doing a new thing in that we have this thing called the church, and that he was going to advance and build his kingdom through the church. But God's heart has been this. All the way from Psalm 67, the psalmist writes, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us, or make his face shine among us or with us. That first verse actually comes from, uh, from Moses' blessing to Aaron, in the book of Numbers and the Levites. And so Moses is blessing Aaron in that way and saying, you priests, 
are going to represent the people to God and God to the people. And now the psalmist is saying, all people groups are going to do that one day. He's asking God for this blessing because so that your ways may be known, so that all people groups may acknowledge God and may acknowledge that salvation is found in Him and in Him alone. That is what verse 2 is telling us. He's talking about not just the nation of Israel in Psalm 67. He uses the phrase, among all nations. That's all people groups, all tribes. May the peoples praise you, God. May all tongues, all languages praise you, God. May all peoples praise you. The the place that I was in northeast India, I'll put a map up here in just a minute and show you. But EC Church of India is actually made up of six different presbyteries, six different, really, tribes. And those six tribes represent EC Church of India. And each of those tribes has a different language. And so I was in a church on a Friday, and we were doing a worship service, and I'm preaching, and somebody's interpreting for me. And we drove 15 minutes away from this church, and they were speaking a different language. And we had a different interpreter to translate for us in a different language. And the psalmist says that all peoples, all tongues, whatever the language, might acknowledge God, might confess that God is Lord. He says, may the nations be glad and sing for joy. Again, this isn't just Israel. I know this is the Old Testament, but the psalmist is saying the goal is that every nation, the United States of America, India, Nepal, Japan, Mexico, Liberia, and every other nation may sing for joy for the rule of the peoples, for God rules the people with equity and guides the nations of the earth. What would it look like if God was the one guiding our nation? That's what Israel's supposed to be doing. This is what it looks like, Israel. God's going to guide you. And we get to witness what does it look like when God isn't guiding Israel. The heart of God is that all nations, all people groups, would confess Him as Lord, and He would be the one leading every single language group, every single ethnicity. He says, the psalmist says, May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you praise you. He's using the plural there, the peoples, because he's talking about every tribe, every tribe and every tongue. May they praise you, God. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. That's what his cry is. That's what he's asking God to do. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will acknowledge him, will fear him, will revere God. That's the goal. That's the heart of the psalmist. That's why we do missionary work. That's why we travel to the ends of the earth to share about God. That's why people right outside our back doors who don't know Jesus, that's why we share about Jesus. Because the goal is that the ends of the earth would revere God for who He is and for all that He has done and all that He desires to do and all that He will do. So this past week, I got to see that happening in India. I got to see Psalm 67 actually take place, where different languages were confessing Jesus as Lord, were praising God. And even though I had no clue what they were saying, I knew why they were doing it. And I knew what they were doing it for, or who they were directing that praise to. So on the screen behind me is the country of India. India is in Asia. As you can see, the big country right there beside it is China. Uh, Pakistan borders it. Nepal is there. We were actually in this section right over here. This is what they call Northeast India. Bangladesh, a different nation, actually almost uh, cuts it off, but doesn't quite. It's right there is a little spot where you go through. But where we actually were was what is Northeast India, so I just blew that up on the screen for you. I was here in Manipur, that's a state in India. I actually flew into Imphal, that's that little red dot if you can see it. And then from there we drove about an hour or so 
to our final destination, which is called Churchampur. So I left Monday night from JFK Airport, uh, 10.30ish, and I arrived at my destination at 1.30 in the afternoon uh, on Wednesday. So total travel time is, I forget what we calculated it to be, is like close to 30 hours or 25 hours. I was in a plane for like 12 to 13 hours. Um, that in itself is a chore, just trying to fly that far and uh, trying to sleep. And, uh, you know, you're, I don't know last time you were on a plane, but I usually fly. I find that a lot of the, I flew Etihad Airways. Etihad is a airline out of United Arab Emirates, which is in the Middle East. And I find that Middle Eastern airlines have more leg room. And so when I fly to that part of the world, I try and use Middle Eastern airlines. And they did have more leg room. For me, it's not that big of a deal. I don't have really big legs. Uh, so, but it's still, you know, it gets old. It's a lot of travel. I said to myself when I did this going to Nepal, as you can see, Nepal is pretty much the same travel. It's right here. I'm never going to do this again where I leave and I'm back within a week. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. So now I'm never going to do it again. Because uh, it's a lot of travel for just a short amount of time, but uh, we are blessed to be a part of uh, the annual leaders conference, Bishop Hill and myself, uh, as we every day, believe it or not, the express purpose of us going was, to hear, was for us to preach. So you endure this once a week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they endured Ted every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. So now uh, you can understand they've made a sacrifice. You've got it made in a shade compared to uh, what they've had to endure. But that's why we went. And again, like I said, I go with the purpose of trying to bring encouragement to the leaders. Uh, one of the reasons why we, I, I seek to do that is in India, it's becoming more difficult to talk about Jesus. Uh, it's not illegal to be a Christian, but to convert somebody, the government is trying to make it more difficult to convert somebody to Christianity. Uh, so when we arrived in India uh, and got to our destination, I think it was Thursday, I can't remember. As I said, I, I usually try and post stuff on Facebook. And so when I'm in a particular country, I'll take a bunch of pictures. Uh, I've got like 150 of them. I'm not going to show that many this morning, but I take a bunch of pictures. I'll do videos. I post it. I post it every day so people can follow along because it's, you know, fun to do that. So I think it was Thursday we got called into the government office in Manipur to give our names again, give them our passport information. Once again, they clarified where we're staying, who we're staying with, and all that kind of stuff. And so as we're leaving... Um, I said, you know what, maybe it's not a good idea that I post on Facebook right now while we're in country. And the, the leader of the EC Church was like, yeah, you probably don't want to do that. We were there on tourist visas and stuff like that. So uh, just to play it safe, we decided not to, to continue to post uh, on the World Wide Web all the stuff that we were doing. I never felt like we were in danger. Neither of us did, Bishop or I. Really, it's normal for a government, uh, when a foreigner enters the country, for that government to know where you are and what you're doing. That's normal. Countries do that kind of thing. So they simply wanted to know we were, we were where we said we were going to be, and we said we are. And we shook hands, and we said, see you later. Uh, and then he got a phone call as we were driving to the airport, making sure we were leaving. Because on that uh, document, we say we're leaving on this day. And I said, oh, it's nice of them to call and wish us bon voyage. So that was nice of them to do that. And uh, so we just stopped doing that. So you, I didn't get to post all the stuff. I'm going to do that this week and next week just kind of show a little bit of what we were doing. But in the area that we are in, in northeast India, the majority of people are Christian. Uh, there's, there's lots of Christians that live in that area. There's also Hindus and, and Muslims, but for the most part, it's Christian uh, but what they're beginning to experience is an increased level of persecution in the sense that the government's beginning to make it harder and harder for you to practice your Christian faith, and they want to stop completely uh, converting people to Christianity. 
And so for those reasons, we kind of were a little bit low key, but uh, still got to do everything that we were going to do when we were there. We stayed in this building. This is actually a college dormitory uh, where I was. EC headquarters is actually on the same campus as our seminary, our College of Theology. So we stayed up here in this room. Um, and we were on campus with all the students that were there for college as well. And uh, the, when I got there, the, we had a fan like that in our room, just a ceiling fan. When I got there, it worked. By the time we left, it didn't work. Saturday, Sunday, it felt like I was in a sweat box as I was uh, sleeping because you can't open the windows uh, because of mosquitoes and things like that. So... It was just kind of our way of losing weight before we came home because we did a lot of eating there. People just love feeding you. And if you like chicken, rice, and curry, you're good because uh, we eat a lot of that. Fortunately, I like all that. Uh, so that's what we did. But this is where we stayed the time that we were there and got to participate in chapel services, got to worship with the students at the chapel and things like that. And so that was a part of, of the, the campus that we were on. And this is just a, a picture of the roads. Uh, if you complain about Pennsylvania potholes, you should go to India uh, because uh, it's a lot worse than here in, in Pennsylvania. And so this is one of the roads. Uh, if it rains, it's full of mud. If it doesn't rain, it's super dusty. And so a lot of people wear masks there, but it wasn't necessarily COVID related. They wear masks because of the amount of dust that is in that area. I didn't put I think I took a picture, but we were in a traffic jam where if you got out of the car and tried to go sideways, you could not have moved. Everything was there. I have no idea how we got out of it, but all of a sudden it started opening up again. Uh, but this is the, the kind of roads we traveled on. And these, these buildings here are actually uh, part of the campus. They, the, the church rents them out. And so they are able to generate income through those rentals. One's a food place and another one's a tailor. Um, and so that helps EC Church of India uh, get funding for the, the work of the church. Uh, so we were, this is a shot from my balcony area um, where we were staying. And you can kind of see in this picture and these other pictures, Northeast India is a very mountainous region. It, the, the terrain is very mountainous. The roads are terrible. One of the things we're trying to do with India, and I'll I hopefully have a video next week to show you of the, we're trying to raise money to buy a vehicle. The car that they currently have, if you can remember Gremlins, you know, the little Gremlin cars that we had, they have like the big back and they're very small. On these roads, they just fall apart. And so they need basically a Jeep, an SUV kind of thing. And so we're trying to raise money for them to be able to do that because a lot of the driving they do is in mountainous areas. This was one of the places we went. And uh, this was a lake there. But again, you can see the mountains there. I just took a picture out that pier. I thought about running off that pier and jumping into the water. And then when I looked at the end of it, there was these giant tractor tires in the water. And I'm like, well, I don't feel like dying today, so I'll just take this nice picture, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, this is another picture, a different lake, same mountains. Um, one of the days we went out to a village church. I'll have a picture of that. I think the next one is a picture of the village church. And uh, we went out there, and this was on the way to that church. Again, built kind of towards the mountains. Um, and they're out. I don't, you probably can't see it, but this dot right out here is actually a hotel that they built out on this lake. We didn't get to go out there and visit it, but uh, you could see it from where we were. So uh, one of the things the general director does, that's the leader of the EC Churches of India, he goes to all the different presbyteries, the different tribes. He speaks, for the most part, six, actually more than six different languages. Each tribe has a different language. Um, and, and some of the tribes, their dialects are, are similar, so he can speak his language even though they're speaking a different language, but because there's a lot of similarities when it's spoken, it's a lot easier to understand than when it's written. So one of his main jobs is traveling all these places. And uh, so that's why we want to try and get him a vehicle so that he can get to where he needs to be. And one of his main jobs is to do exactly what we were doing and bring encouragement to the church. So that was our job. One of the first churches we visited was this church in a village. 
Uh, I'm trying to remember how far away it was from where we were staying, but it was out more in the mountains. Uh, they started constructing this church before COVID, but when COVID hit, they could not get any more supplies, and so it's kind of half finished. Uh, this is where we gathered for our first service. It was a lot of missionaries. This was a, a missionary event that we were doing, so missionaries from different parts of India came uh, to this event, some that are doing missions work in Myanmar and Bhutan. If you saw the map, those countries are right next to India, um, and they are doing missionary work there. So we were there. The service lasted. I have a picture of these benches. So this is what people sat on for over three hours. That's how long the service lasted. No, I was not preaching for three hours. It wasn't my fault that we were there that long. They had a lot of different stuff going on. And because our trip was shortened, because uh, Bishop Hill is actually in Canada now, we got back Tuesday. What day did I get back? Tuesday. We got back Tuesday and Saturday, yesterday, the bishop was leaving for Canada. So we had to do a lot in a short amount of time. So we combined two days of services into one, and this is what their rear ends had to endure for uh, a pretty long time. So again, you can appreciate the thin piece of fabric that's between you and the wood that you're sitting on because they didn't have any fabric to, to break that. So one of the things we did in this church was we brought some messages, but but a bunch of different tribes would present some kind of uh, dance, usually connected to their tribe, set to Christian music. And so I think there were four different tribes that shared some kind of dance or a couple of people just sang. And the video I have is showing one of those traditional dances. So there's the bishop right there. I'm on the floor doing the camera work. But different tribes would do this same kind of thing. Now you can't understand the song in the background, but it's a Christian song that they are putting dance to of whatever their traditional dance is. The things they're wearing, again, that is connected to their tribe. That's why they gave us all these different things. And then each tribe would do something different. And a lot of them did some kind of dance. So I was thinking it'd be great for Lily, Leah, all the dancers we have in our church. We don't have any kind of tradition. Maybe you guys should make up a dance. We call our tribe Gracie C Church. And you can make up some kind of crazy dance and we can play music to it. So this is a picture of us looking dignified in our hats here. Uh, there's the bishop, uh, that's Pal Zek Tong. He is the, the leader of the EC Church of India. Um, he was our host the, the, while we were there. And again, you can kind of see the, the scarf that we had on. The, the girls standing behind us, again, were uh, a different group, a different tribe that got up and did a, a dance and to uh, some Christian music. Um, and again, that, that lasted multiple hours so we got through all that, but we got to experience a lot of the, uh, a lot of the different tribes um, in that church. As I said, the sole purpose really of us going there was to do some preaching. And so every day there was a worship service. Um, Sundays, they have three services. They do a service in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. And the services that we were a part of, they had choirs at every service. Some sang some hymns I recognized, the melody, not the words, but the melody. Some sang what we would call choruses or something, and some did a little bit more contemporary type music. Uh, but each tribe, again, has a youth choir. And so part of uh, what you do at a worship service is the youth would get up and uh, share a message or share a song. Now you can see in this church, um, looks a little bit different than the village church I showed you. This one, again, is a little bit different than that church. When we were in Churchanpur, which is the town we were in, uh, you can see from the structure uh, that they're, they have more modern-looking uh, churches. And so, again, just benches lining the church. And they're, they're, air, they're a little bit more advanced than us with air conditioning. 
If you can see, here's a fan, there's a fan, there's a fan, there's a fan. The fans are close to you and they surround the sanctuary. All we have are windows and these ceiling fans, I don't think, actually produce much uh, air. So AC-wise, they were a step above us. So if you want to get some AC, you're going to have to talk to Gary. Gary loves spending money at Grace Church for things like that. Uh, or now that I showed Gary this, he's probably going to put some fans up. Well, we don't need AC. Look, this is how they do it in India. We'll just do it the same way here. Uh, so we had different worship services. Again, another choir uh, presenting at a worship service. This is probably one of the larger churches. I think it's about 1,000 members at this church. EC Church of India is about 66,000 members of EC Church of India. Back in, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the date. I don't know if it was 2000 or, 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 or later. Uh, there was a split in the EC Church of India. At one time, there was over 100,000 uh, members of the EC Church of India, but then one tribe left, and these six presbyteries stayed together. And so this one was one of the larger churches. And you can kind of see how many people are crammed in there, and they have a balcony, and they were crammed in there. And one of the things this church did, because it was a special occasion, and one of the things you do in India is you have tea at different times. So those trays are all teacups. They're like a metal teacup. And there were multiple other people carrying those trays. They had like, I don't know, 500 cups of tea that they had prepared. And they're on their way not to a dishwasher. They are the dishwashers. So after the service, they had to wash like 500, I don't know how many mugs, uh, from everybody having tea. And I took a picture of that, but I don't know that I have it. Um, I, I took a picture and got out of there quick before they tried to rope me into helping to wash dishes. But they did a lot of, of dishes that day. Again, here's me and my uh, one of the tribal shirts that I got. And what I like about India is they build things for short people. So you can kind of see the podium and the mic is already set up for a short guy to, to talk at it. And in India, if you see any of the pictures, I'm about the same level. So this time, usually I'm going to the mic and I have to adjust it and bring it down. This time, Bishop Hill had to go to the mic and they had to adjust it to bring it up uh, because all of us are pretty much short. And, and what I wear is in, they wear flip-flops with long pants, I wear flip-flops with long pants. They eat chicken and rice and curry, I eat chicken and rice and curry. The only thing that was different was I was way whiter than them and couldn't speak their language. But other than that, I feel pretty Indian. So this was at a chapel service where we got to encourage the students who are graduating in May and kind of moving on to see what God has in store for them. And the bishop and I got to share a message of encouragement for them. Uh, this is actually one of the older churches from EC Church of India. It doesn't have our name in it anymore because it was part of the other tribe, but we got to to visit this church and went out to uh, the uh, pretty high mountain. I think the elevation was over 3,000 feet uh, for India. This was our tour guide, a lady who knew and was a part of the, the EC church at one time in that village and knew some of the people that we were talking about from back in the missionary days when they planted these churches and had a school there. And so she kind of showed us around the area. There was a, a very nice lookout that was built by a government official that you could go up and take pictures and stuff like that. So the bishop and myself and the, the guy that was with us, we were walking towards it. And on this village road, you can kind of see it back here. All of a sudden, this Jeep comes rolling up and it's got a bunch of soldiers in it, like five or six soldiers and two guys that come flying out of it. We're walking towards this lookout. We see them coming. We just keep walking she heads them off and starts talking to them. And before we knew it, they were gone. They just left. I don't know what she said to them, but she must have scared them. And we said, it doesn't matter what country you're in. You don't mess with grandma. Grandma is going to put you in your place. Whatever she said, put them in their place. They left, and we didn't have any problems uh, with them. One of the other things about India uh, that, that uh, I've noticed is this young man just wanted a picture with me. I, I can't tell you how many pictures I took with people at a church service like this. Now, if you guys want to do this, I'll let you do this. But everybody would come up and we'd get a picture together. The bishop would stand here. I'd stand here. You'd come up. We'd get a picture. You'd leave. The next person would come up. They'd get a picture. 
it kind of made you feel like a rock star, like everybody wants your picture. So I'm just wandering about the campus and, hey, can you get a picture with my son? Sure, I'll get a picture with your son. And so we just did pictures uh, like crazy all over India. I don't know if they'll appear on Facebook or not, uh, but that was one of the things that you know, kind of made Bruce and the bishop and I feel pretty good about ourselves because we were getting pictures with uh, all kinds of people. But that's, I don't know why, but they just like taking pictures with you. So when the service ends, we didn't leave for another 20, 30 minutes because of, of all the pictures. And as you can see, I'm wearing one of my gifts of the tribal dress that uh, they gave us. Uh, but that was something that we did all over the place. This is the staff of the Evangelical College of Theology. We again had an opportunity to just bring words of encouragement to them. Uh, they're getting close to graduation, so they're looking forward to that. Uh, but we had a chance to share with them. This is Reverend Janga. He leads our EC Church in Nepal. I invited him up to India when we were there. This is uh, Reverend Dr. Larosium Sangate. Uh, he is the principal of the College of Theology. At one time, he led the EC Church of India. He did his doctoral program here in the United States. And actually, his son lives with Jeff Byerly, one of our pastors uh, at Bethesda EC Church. His son lives with him. And he's got two daughters here in the United States as well. So we were with them uh, during that time. Had an opportunity to go out to some of the people's homes. Uh, they wanted to invite us to come and have breakfast together. And that was one way that they could show appreciation for us coming and hospitality. Uh, it's not easy to get food for everybody. Uh, typically, that's not something that happens. It, it comes at a cost to them. Uh, and that's one of the things they do to, to say thank you and to show their gratitude. And typically, oftentimes for breakfast, we had chicken legs and eggs. So if you like Kentucky Fried Chicken, you'd like breakfast in India because you eat chicken in India. Sometimes they serve rice, but they've been hosting Americans long enough that they know we're not going to eat rice in the morning. So I had a lot of eggs. They made something like pancakes for breakfast. I had some pancakes for breakfast. Uh, but when we would go out to eat, uh, this is Reverend Janga and myself and the bishop and one of our leaders, uh, Henna Singsong, we'd go out to different restaurants and I would order curry. I told you, I like curry. I'd get chicken curry and I do like it there, but I told Jess when I come home, I'm not eating rice and I'm not eating chicken. And so on Wednesday, we went out to eat for steak and I had a baked potato. So that was, that was good for me, but uh, in India... I have the chicken curry, and let me tell you, it is spicy. Um, so I'm paying for that now, just the, the amount of spice that I had. This is Reverend Palzek Tong and his family. Um, there's his wife and his daughter. He actually has, I think, almost 12 people living at his house. Uh, his father passed away, and so as the eldest son had to return, he was out on the mission field, had to return and take care of his family. That's just what you do in India and so he has his family and others of his family living with him um, in India. One of the things that they do in India is they make a lot of monuments in plaques. And so this is Bishop Bruce Hill and myself standing beside a plaque. We dedicated and inaugurated this uh, building that I showed you earlier where they have different rentals in it. We did that via Zoom. So I came down to the church, I think, at 1030 at night one night. Uh, to do a Zoom call with uh, EC Church of India so we could go on Zoom and dedicate and inaugurate that building. We did the same thing to the conference hall. And before we left to remember our visit, we planted a tree, kind of like an arbovita tree. And now they're going to care for that tree. I said, please don't let this tree die. That'll be a bad uh, sign for me when I come back if my tree that I planted is dead. So I said, please each night sing to my tree. That way, it'll grow big and strong, and next time, the tree will be as tall as me. So the bishop planted a tree, I planted a tree uh, to recognize our visit there. And to end that visit, we got a picture with some of the leaders from the EC Church of India. Again, it was really a, a time for us to encourage them and for us to just spend time together. These trips are essential, I think, in continuing to strengthen our partnership and our bond as brothers and sisters in Christ, and also as part of the EC Church family. 
Uh, that's where what I do when I go to these places. As I said, it's a privilege that I get, uh, not just to be a part of what God's doing in Schuylkill Haven, but I get to see that in India. I get to see that in Mexico, Liberia, Japan, Nepal, and it is a special thing to actually go there and be with them, talk and share. Before we left, Bishop Hill and myself laid hands on Pao Tung and prayed for him. And again, it's just something that God does through the Holy Spirit. He's able to help lift some of those burdens. And I said, when we leave, your burdens will be lifted by our prayers because we'll continue to pray for you and remember you. And as they face more challenges, because the challenges are coming in India, as they face more of those challenges, uh, to be reminded that uh, they're not alone, that God's with them. You see Church USA is with them. And actually, churches all around the globe are with them as well. So again... Thank you to everybody who fills in while I'm away for Pastor John Smith, who is here to share with you, uh, the leaders here at Grace Church that take care of things while I'm gone. It is a blessing and a privilege that I get to do two things I love most, and that's pastoring a church and traveling to see what God's doing all over the world. And I couldn't do that if you guys didn't let me do that, so I want to thank you for that. And just to, to close just want to close and have a prayer for EC Church of India and our partnership with them. God, thank you for this opportunity that you have given to me uh, to be a part of the church around the world. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to see what you're doing in India, Lord God, and just for some brief moments, bring some words of encouragement to them, help to shoulder and lift some burdens, Lord. Uh, that they might have, and the challenges that I know that they feel and that they're facing uh, with some increased difficulties with uh, the government that is in India. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would strengthen your church. God, I pray that you would continue to encourage them, Lord. I pray that they would remember, God, that even as Bishop Hill and I have left, that they're not alone, that we are partnering with them. We do that as the GMC financially in a lot of ways, but most especially we do that through the power of prayer, Lord God. And so we lift up that church to you. I lift up specifically the leaders, Reverend Palzik Tong, and the work that he is doing, Lord, uh, for his family and ask that you would bless them. God, I pray that as we read in Psalm 67, the goal, our hope, our desire is so that all people groups on earth might acknowledge you and your ways. And God, I pray that that might be the case in India Lord, I pray that that might be the case here in the United States of America as well. Lord, help us to be reminded of the importance of this mission that we are on. You call some people to go to places like India for that, but Lord, you call some of us to walk outside our door, start a conversation with our neighbor, and reach them for Jesus as well. So Lord, I pray that as we are partnering with your church globally, you would continue to inspire us, embolden us uh, to be a part of your mission here in Schuylkill Haven. And God, I pray that more people might, might come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that you would continue to make a way, Lord, that we would be able to talk to those around us about what it means to confess Jesus as Lord. We pray it in his name. Amen.